Hey guys, today we're going to talk about inverse functions. So if a function f takes a point from set A to set B, then the inverse of that function, called f inverse like this, it looks like f to the negative 1, but that's really read as f inverse, uh, takes the points from set B back to the same points in set A. So it kind of looks like this. Uh, I've got a set of numbers here, and I've got a function 2x minus 5. And so it takes 0 to negative 5, and it takes 2 to negative uh, 1, because 2 times uh, 2 is 4, minus 5 is 1, negative 1. And it takes, uh, two, uh, or takes negative 5 to negative 15, because 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, minus 5 is 15. Now, its inverse, the inverse function, f inverse, is, one, is y equals 1 half x plus 5. So as you can see, if I take negative 5 and I plug it in here, I get 1 half of 0, which is 0. So I just took this point from here to here, and then I took it right back to that point. If I plug in negative 1, I get uh, half of 4, which is 2. And if I plug in negative 15, I get negative 10, and half of that's negative 5. Okay? So that's what an inverse does. Okay, so find the inverse of... Uh, f of x equals 4x. So here's the way you find the inverse. You take the function uh, y equals 4x, and you switch the x and the y's. So it's x equals 4y, and then you solve for y. Okay, so I would divide this by 4, and I would get y equals x over 4, which is 1 4 x. And then uh, I would write it as f inverse of x is 1 fourth x. So you just switch the x and the y and solve for y. Okay, f of x is 1 fourth x plus 3. We're going to find the inverse of that. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to say that x is going to equal 1 fourth y plus 3. And then I'm going to solve for um, y. So I'm going to uh, subtract 3. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So y would be 4x uh, minus 12. And that would be f inverse of x would be 4x minus 12. Okay, so this time f of x is going to be the square root of x minus 6. So x would equal the square root of y minus 6. So I'm going to square both sides. x squared is y minus 6, and I would add 6. So y would be x squared plus 6. Okay. So definition of inverse functions. Let f and g be two functions such that f of g of x equals x for every x in the domain of g, and g of f of x equals x for every x in the domain of f. Under these conditions, the function g is an inverse function of the function f denoted by f inverse. Okay. So the domain of f must be the range of f inverse, and the range of f must be the domain of f inverse. All right, so there's a difference between finding a, um, an inverse and um, proving that it's an inverse. And we've got a little technical glitch right here. That I need to fix. There we go. Yeah.
Okay, so verify, which means prove, that the two functions below are inverse functions of each other. So here's what I got to prove. I got to prove f of g of x is x, and I got to prove g of f of x is x. Okay, so f of g of x. I'm going to take this, put it in here. So 2 times the cube root of, this, of x plus 1 over 2 cubed minus 1. Now this has to be x. So my order of operations, the cube is going to cancel the cube root, and I'm going to get 2 times uh, x plus 1 over 2 minus 1. And then next I'm going to cancel the 2's, and I'm going to get x plus 1 minus 1, and then the x's are going to cancel out, and I'm just going to get x. So, so far, so good. Now, if this comes out to something other than x, then they're not inverses and you're done, assuming you did it right. Okay. Now let's look. What happened there? Uh, let's see. There we go. Now, we're not done yet. We've got to do g of f of x. So g of f of x means I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in there. So I'm going to get the cube root of um, 2x cubed minus 1 plus 1 over 2. And i got to show that's x as well. So the first thing that I would do is I would, the 1's are going to cancel out here first. So this is going to equal uh, the cube root of 2x cubed over 2. Okay, next, the 2's are going to cancel here. And so I'm going to have the cube root of x cubed, which is just x. So when I have these two things combined, this implies that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Okay, now, be really careful about something because I've had students do this before. They write this down like this, and they just go like this. And uh, that will get you a zero, okay? Because I see no order of operations. I don't know. Uh, we don't know if that actually works, okay? You can't just cancel everything out and leave, a zero, uh, leave an X. So do not do that, fair warning. You must show each of the steps in the proper order. Okay, now this one just says find the inverse. So um, that's just figure out what it is. Okay, so uh, again, I'm going to switch my x and y. So we're going to get x equals 5 over y minus 2. And I'm going to solve for y. So I need to multiply both sides by uh, y minus 2 in order to get... Uh, these to cancel. So I'm going to get uh, x times y minus 2 equals 5. Now I've got to divide by x. So y minus 2 is 5 over x. And then I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And I'm going to get y equals 5 over x plus 2. x cannot equal 0. Up here, this should have said x cannot equal 2. And there you go. There's our inverse right there. Okay, graph of an inverse function. So... If I have a function like uh, this function right here, this red function, some kind of cubic uh, 
uh, formula here. Um, an inverse is always a reflection of a function in the line y equals x. So the line y equals x is this right here. And you can see that zero, if zero, x is zero, y is zero, if x is one, y is one, if x is two, y is two, and so on. Okay, so there's my, there's my line, and this is a perfect mirror image right here. Okay, and that's the way it should always look like. Notice they both cross the x-axis here at the same point. Where this one goes vertical, this one goes horizontal. And so on. Okay, definition of one-to-one. -one. A function f is one-to-one -one, uh, when for a and b in its domain, f of a equals f of b implies that a equals b. Existence of an inverse function. So a function f has an inverse function f inverse if and only if it is one-to-one. -one. A function is one-to-one -one if it passes the horizontal line test. A horizontal line passes through a function more than, if a horizontal line passes through a function more than once, the function is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so basically what that means is, the, the easiest way to do that is with the horizontal line test. So if you're looking at a function and you want to know if it has an inverse, you can do the horizontal line test. And if it passes that horizontal line test, then it's a function or then it has an inverse. So for example, if I had uh, this one or this right here, is there a horizontal line that I can draw that no matter where I put it, it will always intersect the graph at only one point. Well, yes, that's true. So this has an inverse. Okay, if I had something like this, all right, this fails the uh, horizontal line test because it crosses two different places and therefore it does not have an inverse. Okay, why would that be? So this is some kind of parabola right here. Okay, so y equals x squared. Um, okay, so that means that uh, Let's say that in my domain over here, I had two and I had negative two. And I squared that, okay, my function was y equals x squared, and it took me over here. Well, two squared is four, and negative two squared is four, so this did this. Okay, this doesn't have an inverse because if I try to square root this thing, and go backwards, how do I know which of these two numbers to go to? I don't. I don't know if this should go to here or if this should go to here. So that's a problem. That, that's why it doesn't have an inverse. It is not one to one, it's, uh, it's two to one here. Okay, is the function f of x the square root of x plus 1, 1 to 1? All right, well, let's just look at what the graph is. A square root plus 1. All right, so it's just been a square root moved up 1. So this thing's going to look like this. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yeah, I can move this thing anywhere I want, okay, and it crosses only one time. So yes, it's one to one. Find the inverse of the function f of x 
minus 3 over 2. Okay, so we're going to switch our x and y. x is going to be 5y minus 3 over 2. We'll go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I'm going to divide by 5. Okay, so this is really just a line. It's 2 fifths x plus 3 fifths. It's a line with a slope of 2 fifths and a y-intercept of 3 fifths. This also is a line. This is a line with a slope of 5 halves and a y-intercept of negative 3 halves. Okay, now all lines have inverses except for a horizontal line. Okay, so to keep in mind. So there's the inverse of the function. Just said find it, so we did that, and it works. Find the inverse of this. All right, let's put this on pause. You figure out the inverse, then jump back on here and tell me uh, what it is, or compare it to what I'm getting at. Okay, so we would switch the x and the y here. We would square both sides. We would add 3 to both sides. And then we would divide by 2. So y would be 1 half x squared plus 3 halves. Find the inverse function of uh, f of x equals x squared. Okay, so here's the problem, is this is not going to have an inverse um, because uh, this is not one-to-one. -one. So if I graph this, x squared looks like this. Oh, but, now, okay, so I, I need to hedge that a little bit. If I just wanted to do this, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, so it would not have an inverse because, like I said before, what if I had 2 and I had negative 2 and I put those in the function, I would get 4. Now, if I've got an answer of 4, do I come back to 2 or negative 2? I don't know. That's why it doesn't have an inverse. However, what did it say with this? Whoops. It's limiting this function to x is greater than 0. Okay, so what does that look like if I graph it? Well, I want x squared greater than 0, but that's just going to be this side right here. Now, that does pass the horizontal line test. That is 1 to 1. The inverse is actually going to look like this. Okay, and I can, I can find the inverse by switching my x and y, and then solving for y. And there you go. There's my inverse right there. You need to have this part added on to the end, though. Okay. So here's our assignment, and here's the pages you're going to do, and I will see you next time.